Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll be covering the brand new firmware update that was just released for the Skydio 2 drone. It's version 7.0.17, and it's one you'll definitely want to download and apply to your drone as soon as possible because it introduces three really cool features you'll want to take advantage of. Now, I know a lot of people out there like to wait on firmware updates. They're a little worried that it may break the drone somehow or limit their flying abilities, and I totally understand that. But remember, firmware updates are issued by companies to do one of two things. They're either fixing bugs with the quad that they've uncovered on their own, or people have complained about something and the engineers have looked at it and said, we can fix that through a firmware update. So it's to repair things in the drone that need attention. The other reason firmware updates are released is to enhance a product. So in this case, all three of these improvements really change the way that drone flies. And I love that about this technology, because what you're buying is a drone with a given feature set that over time becomes better, becomes smarter, can do things it couldn't do when you first bought it. Imagine for a second that you're driving your car and you get a notice that they can do a firmware update to your car to double your gas mileage. Why would you not take advantage of that? So most of the firmware updates that are out there, vast majority of them, will either fix a problem with the drone, which is a good thing, or it'll enhance the feature sets to give you options and abilities that you didn't have with the drone it was first released. And what I love about Skydio so much is that they're in California, and we know that the U.S. has been locked down with the coronavirus going on, so they weren't able to work. They weren't able to build drones. They weren't in the office. They couldn't go to work. They didn't just sit home drinking beer and taking, you know, taking naps and stuff. They really thought about it and said, you know what? We've been working on software for a while. Are there things we can work on remotely as a team and build into this new firmware release? Because any time a product comes out, I've worked on a couple of products from the ground up, and I can tell you that there's a, a timetable for features and functions that are built into a product, and they're looking at that timetable thinking, well, we can't build the drones, but we can certainly code, and we can certainly test on our own to see how this microcode might affect that drone and how we can improve it. And I love the fact that they're doing this in this mandated downtime. So what a great company to be working on the drone while they're away. So the three things they fixed with this firmware update, not fixed, but enhanced, are number one, it's gonna give you a longer tracking distance. So they've improved the tracking distance on the beacon from 10 meters to 40 meters. So the drone can actually track you now way further away. And that's a beautiful thing because it's not only capturing you, but it's capturing much more of the background around you to give the viewer an idea of exactly where you are riding your bike or your skateboard or your motorcycle. And I love the fact that it can now go out to 40 meters. Now on the phone, it only doubles the distance, but it was 10 meters before. It's now 20 meters away if you're using the phone. But again, to, to four times it on the beacon and double it on the phone is a really good thing. And that's not easy to do because remember the Skydio product has to watch you when you're moving and watch everything around you and avoid the stuff that's around you. So its whole job is to follow you and not run into other stuff. The minute I pull back double the distance or four times the distance, I have a whole lot more stuff I gotta pay attention to. So the processing inside was beefy enough to handle that, but it took the software updates to introduce the intelligence into the artificial intelligence inside the drone to be able to track all those extra objects at that further distance away. So it seems like a small thing, but I can tell you from an engineering perspective, it was a really big deal to build that in there. All right, the second thing they did was improve the beacon. They've introduced both hover and orbit in the beacon. Those were things that weren't there in the beginning. And I love the fact, again, that I bought an accessory that can be updated over time to give me functionality I didn't have when I first bought it. So that's the second major improvement. The third improvement, which is a bit of a parlor trick, but I do like it, and I'll tell you why, is the fact that the drone will now recognize the logo on the case. So it does case landing. Now, what that means is the brains, the artificial intelligence, the neural networks that are going on inside this incredibly advanced drone have now got programming in it where it's looking for that particular logo. So in there somewhere, there's a bitmap of exactly what that looks like. And when you hover over it and point the camera down during landing, it's gonna draw this virtual reality image of the drone in a circle around that landing, and it's gonna put the drone down right on the case. Now you might think, well, okay, that's kind of cool, but I can already do that with a lot of other drones. The challenge with the Skydio drone is that because it's got these underneath propellers, you can't really land this on a mat because when it comes down, the mat's gonna sink a little bit into the ground because of the weight of the quad, and those bottom propellers are gonna come really close to hitting that mat or hitting the ground. So. I always landed on something hard like this, and a couple of times I've landed on the case manually, and it's a bit tricky to do that. So the fact that I can land it on the case and keep those propellers well off the ground and well off the case is a really good thing. So I'm gonna test all of this stuff tomorrow. It's raining cats and dogs outside today, but in this clip, I wanted to talk about those three improvements. Next, I'm gonna show you how to do the update. It's fairly automatic, but there are a couple of places in the update where it can go a little bit wonky on you. So I'm gonna go through the update and explain where those 
uh, process may break down for you so you understand exactly how to do the update. And then I'm gonna come back at the end. As much as I love this drone, there are two things you need to know about if you haven't bought the drone yet that you may need to be aware of because they're not things that are really terrible about the drone, but they're things that could kind of trip you up. They're not intuitive things and they're things you really should know about. So I'll come back at the end and describe what those two gotchas are and how you get around them. So stay tuned. Next, I'm gonna go through the actual download and firmware update to the drone, and then I'll come back at the end with those two gotchas. The Skydio app will alert you when a new update's been released, and you have the option of doing the update right then or doing it later at a more convenient time. If you'd like to postpone the update and just start flying, tap later. If you decide you do want to do the update right now, tap the update icon to get started. This will bring you to a screen and let you know what version of update you'll be downloading to the drone, as well as the version you're currently running. It's always a good idea to confirm that you're updating to the version of firmware you want. Once you're satisfied, tap the update icon. The next screen provides the details for what the update will change on the drone. These might be bug fixes or enhancements to make the drone safer or a little bit more fun to fly. Take a minute to read through these so you know what to expect when the update completes. Once you've read the overview, tap update to continue. This starts the update process by downloading the new firmware to your phone. Once completed, you'll need to pair your phone with the Skydio 2 over Wi-Fi. Tap the connect icon to start this process. On the next screen, you can normally tap the connect button when the lights on the drone are a solid blue. If you're having trouble with connecting this way, you can always go into your phone's Wi-Fi settings and manually connect to the drone. Once this connection is made, the software starts transferring that downloaded firmware from your phone to the drone, and you can monitor this progress on the screen. Once the software transfer from your phone to the drone is completed, the Skydio 2 will automatically reboot to install the new code. After this reboot finishes, the drone activates the software and enables the new features. When that's complete, you can tap done and just start flying. These next two gotchas I'm gonna talk about are simple things that if you own the Skydio 2 already, you've probably figured out on your own, but if you're thinking about buying the Skydio, maybe you've already ordered it and it's on its way to you, there are definitely things you may trip over when the Skydio 2 arrives. I've also gotten a ton of questions about them on the channel, so I thought I'd talk about them here. The first thing has to do with the propellers. Now, Skydio's done a really good job of building in a lot of indications of where the propellers go, because remember, when you're flying a quad, these propellers that are next to each other are gonna rotate in different directions. And that's on purpose because you've gotta have a counterbalance to keep this thing level in the air. So what you've got are propellers here and here that are rotating in different directions, and here and here that are rotating in different directions. You can't just slap a propeller in any mode. You're gonna have a lot of problems if you do that. So what Skydio does, and most drone manufacturers do, is they label the propeller. So in this case, they've got blue markings on one, and they've got gray markings on the other. So it should be a simple matter of just pushing down on the propeller, spinning the motor, and popping it off. And that comes off really easy. The challenge is, Unlike a lot of other quads that have little legs that stick down on the bottom of propeller mounts where it's obvious which way they go on, this doesn't. So you can actually, if you're not looking at it close, put the propeller on backwards. So you can actually flip it over, put it on the post, push down, and you can't lock it. Now that's a good thing because it means you can't put the propeller on upside down because that's not going to fly if the propeller's flipped. But you may push down on this and think, how come that propeller's not going on? Do I have a defective propeller? What did I do? Did I break the mount when I took it off? And I've had people say that they've spent 10 minutes trying to figure that out. Again, it should be obvious now that I'm talking about it, that the propeller has to face with the concave down. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you put the concave down and pop it on there, it goes on just nice and natural, no issue whatsoever. So blue to blue, gray to gray. Where it gets really tricky is when you're putting the bottom propellers on, because again, unlike most quads on the market that have older propellers on the top, this has two on the top and two on the bottom. The two on the bottom are flipped. So you've actually got the concave part of it when you flip it over facing up and that can get confusing. So if you take these guys off, maybe you're replacing a propeller, this one got hit a tree or something and you crack the end of it, you throw it in your bag, you pull another one out. If you make the same mistake and make the concave down and put it on there, it's not gonna fit because again, it's on the bottom. So the concave's gotta face down, which means it's upside down. So all I'm getting at here is that there's two ways the propellers can go on. If you forget which way they go on, first off, match the colors up. And second, if you try it and it doesn't lock, it's not you, you didn't break anything, the propeller's not defective, you just have it flip. So if you've got it upside down like this, concave goes up. If you're putting those top propellers on, concave goes down. And that'll save you a lot of time. And I know it's not something that you won't figure out on your own, but if I'm out in the field, 
and I want to get a quad back up in the air really quickly after I damage the blade. I don't want to spend 10 minutes wasting time trying to figure out what's going on with those props. And again, I've gotten a ton of questions about this. So that's it with the propellers. The second thing I want to talk about is a little bit more concerning, and that has to do with the cables. So if you bought the controller assembly and you've got a phone and you want to mount it up in the top of the assembly, the cable that comes with it is a really nice heavy duty cable. So it's a standard USB-C to whatever type phone you've got. So the one end is a USB-C connection. The other end in this case is an Apple connection. The problem with this cable, from my perspective, again, as an engineer, is that you've got a really heavy duty cable, you've got incredibly heavy strain relief on both ends, and you've got really fragile connections on the end of that. Worse, when I plug it into the back of the controller, look how far that sticks out. And the torque, because of the leverage point, the torque on that connection inside the controller has got to be massive. So if I'm banging this, or I pull on the cable, or I pull down on the cable, I'd stand a chance of cracking the internal connections on that USB-C connection, or I could break the cable. Even worse on this end, because I've got a small, fragile connection, like this Apple connection on the end here, this lightning connection, and I plug it into my phone, now I've got this, this fragile cable sticking out the side of my phone. Because remember, the phone mounts in the side like this, and this sticks way out the side. So if you inadvertently, while you're flying, you're getting excited, you bang this really hard, the amount of torque pulling down on that cable could easily damage your phone or snap off the end. And that's exactly what's happened to me. So I was at it in my cable. Actually, I was putting it back into the holder, and I sort of pushed a little harder than I should have, and the end popped off. So it completely broke off the end of the lightning cable. So what I'm getting at here is be really careful with the cable when you put it in there. It should last you a long time. It's an incredibly nice, secure, strong cable. But I feel like by adding these monster strain reliefs on the end, they've worsened the problem because that gives this cable a whole lot more torque when you're putting it in that causes all kinds of problems at that leverage point where they can actually crack off the end of the connection. So when I find a problem like this, I always like to fix it. So for me, I said, all right, engineering team here at Drone Valley, <clears throat> can we sit down and come up with a cable that fixes that problem in two ways? Number one, I don't want the cable sticking out the back anymore. I want a cable that's got a right angle because if I have a right angle connection and I pull on the cable, I'm not pulling in the most uh, damaging way, down or up, I'm pulling alongside, so I'm, I'm having the torque follow the cable. I also would love to have a right angle cable here that plugs into the phone. Again, so if I do yank on the cable or I bang against it, it's not gonna crack it and it's not sticking out as far. So we came up with a custom cable that we have available on the website that has a USB-C in the back, which gives you that right angle. Again, the strain relief now is along that cable, not either way this way. And the second side of it has a right angle cable here, which plugs into your phone. So it does two things. It sticks out less, so you haven't got this cable kind of hanging out the end that's gonna get snagged and everything. But more importantly, it puts the strain on that cable straight down. It's not gonna be pulling out like this or twisting on the cable, it pulls it straight down. So it gives you torque relief. It's also a little thinner cable, which I like a lot. You don't need that really big heavy duty cable. It's it's more for show than anything. This would be great if I had a, an eight foot cable I was plugging into a charger in the wall on my phone on the bed, but this is something that you can use a lightweight cable to make those connections. So I have these available in all three flavors, uh, both micro USB, Apple, and USB-C if you need them. And that's just a way to fix that problem. So if this is working fine for you, stick with it, just be really cautious. But if you break it or you wanna get a replacement we have this custom cable available on the website. And that's pretty much it for the two gotchas. I love this drone. I fly this thing almost every day. It's out in the field with me an awful lot. I love the fact that I still can't get past it, that it can navigate through a really thick brush and not run into a tree. And honestly, it's probably smarter than I am when I'm flying. It acts like a co-pilot. And if I try to do something dumb where I'm going into an area that's too tight, it actually takes control as the co-pilot and says, Rick, you can't handle this. I'm going to fly through this, this gnarly brush down here and make sure that I don't hit anything. So I love the drone an awful lot. And again, these are small things, but since we got a lot of questions about them, I thought I'd talk about them on the channel and see if we could offer some solutions. So hopefully you found this clip helpful. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, please drop those in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. We also have a lot more clips coming. We're reviewing a lot of other drones and a lot of their high-tech stuff on the channel. So if you haven't subscribed to Drone Valley, hit that little button down there in the corner and join the family because we'd love to have you as a subscriber. And again, we're going to be giving drones away later this summer. You're definitely going to want to get in on those. So thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.